Uh, good morning, everyone. I can say morning today. We we meet in uh, in Bristol. We meet in the afternoon, and the little joke is I get it wrong every time. I always say good morning, so I got it right today. There we go. That's that's how much I get it wrong. Uh, there's no pressure there either, is there? Five to ten minutes. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to just share a few thoughts with you. Um, out of what we've heard so far. Um, I don't know what it's like in your house, uh, but in my house, uh, the excitement is starting to rise. Uh, and that's just with me. Um, I constantly get asked the question, uh, how many days till Christmas? Um, and my, my answer normally is, um, the same amount of days that I told you five minutes ago. Uh, that's the level of excitement that we're reaching. The question is though, what's the excitement reaching for? What's it rising for? Is it the presents that we're looking forward to receive or maybe even give? Uh, is it the family and friends that this year we're really hoping we get to do Christmas with? Or is it the Christmas dinner and all that goes with all of that? All those things are great, but I want to take a moment to focus on the meaning of Christmas, to focus on Jesus. I want to pick up a little bit from the story that Victoria so wonderfully read. Uh, we have probably heard that story plenty of times, a story of Jesus' birth, but this time there was extra things added. <coughs> The story expanded who Jesus is. My question to you today is, who is Jesus to you? Is he another baby who was born many years ago? Is he just a story that gets told this time of year? Is he the reason that we sit in a school hall and watch children dress up in clothes and act out of play. We see in this story that this little girl can't believe all these extra things that are being added to the nativity. Um, she sees them as really spoiling the nativity. How dare you bring a phone and a mop and a tent and all those different things until she realises that there's more to who Jesus is. That he's not just a baby born all those years ago. Jesus wasn't just a baby, wasn't just a man. He wasn't even just a carpenter, the trade that he'll have learned from, his, from Joseph. We see that Jesus came to live among us, left all the riches behind, all his pride and came as low and as low as he could. Jesus came to make God known. He came to make God known to each and every one of us here today. And I've brought some things to help us remember these things. My kids afterwards say, hey, I didn't know you were nicking my things that you could have to you, so here we go. Uh, we read that he came as a lion. This was as close as I could get. It's more of a tiger, but that's what we could find. Is he going to stay? There we go. So he came as a lion. Not a lion for Mary to ride on, but that Jesus is a king. Jesus was born as a king. We read in Matthew, uh, in the book of the Bible, where it says, uh, where where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it arose and have come to worship him. We also read in the same book a little bit later on in the story that Jesus was charged and it read, this is Jesus, king of the Jews. We read in Isaiah that it says, and he will be called wonderful counselor, 
mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus is King over all. Today, do you need to let him rule and reign in your life? Are there fears, worries, problems that you're trying to beat yourself? Well, Jesus came to be king in our lives. He came to help us with those things. He wants to be king in each of our lives. He wants to do that so that we can have life, but have life to the full. The next thing I've got, who can guess, this is as close as I could get to white. <laughs> he came as a waiter. I don't go to many restaurants where uh, I see many people walking around with a tea towel or a napkin or whatever it might be. But he came as a servant, uh, born in a humble, serve, a humble stable. It says that just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus came to serve us. He came to help, to bless, to be with us. But God gives us this challenge as well, that we are called to love our neighbour. We are called to be servants ourselves. This Christmas, who could you help? Not only what can you receive, but what can you give? Who are the people in your streets and neighbourhoods that are lonely this Christmas? Who are the people that we can serve and bless as Jesus came to serve us? My next one. Can you guess what it might be? A handbag. A handbag, yeah, It's my first ear kit. Uh, it said in the story, there we go. It said in the story, I'm going to put that there as well. Uh, it said in the story about Jesus, about there being a nurse in the story. I could have got up different ones of you that are nurses and stood you at the front, but I didn't want to embarrass you. Um, it says that Jesus came to fix sin, to bring healing. Uh, it says this was to fill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. Jesus came to give us a new life to set us free from the things that hold us back, to bring us a freedom. He came to wipe our hearts clean if we ask him to. He came so that we could be forgiven, so that we could enter into relationship with our Father God. He came to bring healing, that he can heal the things that we're struggling with. I don't have time, I was going to tell a story of when I was healed once. If you want to know about it, ask me. But he came to heal as well. Lastly, as good as I could get. Boats, yeah, you got it. We had an inflatable dinghy, but I just didn't want to go <laughs> So we've got those. Um, it says in that story about Jesus being a rescuer. In the book of Luke, it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. It says in the Bible, He came to seek and save, to be a rescuer. Not a superhero. It's not that He's got one gift or one skill, but He came to save. He came to bring us eternal life. We are all in different boats. We're all in different situations in our lives. 
but we're all in the same storm. The question is, is do you want to invite Jesus to be in your boat today? He's there, he's willing to come and be in your life, to forgive you, to bring healing, to serve you if you let him. He came to be a rescuer. Jesus is the greatest gift that we could ever have this Christmas. Jesus is the greatest gift that you could ever have this Christmas. Jesus to me is my friend. He's my saviour. He's my rescuer. Maybe for some of you, you would like to know Jesus as these things today. Let me tell you, you can. You can know Jesus today for yourself. He can be all those things to you as well. Maybe you already know Jesus. Maybe what God is speaking to you today about is knowing him a bit more. Is letting him be king in an area of your life that maybe you've been holding back from. Letting him rule and reign in something that you're finding difficult. Well, today, he can do that. He can come and be king over every part of our lives. Maybe you need healing. Maybe you need to ask him for help in a situation. The Jesus that we read about is the Jesus that can come and do that today. I'm just going to pray just to finish. You might like to close your eyes. You might like to bow your head. Whatever works for you. And I'm going to say amen at the end of my prayer. And if you agree with what I pray, you might like to say amen as well. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for being king. Thank you for being a rescuer. Thank you for saving us. And Lord, we want to say we're sorry for the things that we have done wrong in our life. Please would you come and forgive us. I now turn from everything that I know is wrong and thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I could be forgiven and be set free. Thank you that you offer me forgiveness and the gift of your spirit. Thank you that you came to heal and to save, to be a rescuer, to be king in our lives. Please come into my life by your Holy Spirit to be with me forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that for the first time, if you said amen to that, um, why don't you talk to someone who invited you or someone you came with, or you could come and talk to me. I'd love to hear if you prayed that for the first time. I'll leave you with this final question. Who will Jesus be to you?